Z590 is officially here, ladies and gentle beans. The new chipset for Intel's latest 11th gen processors. Asus was kind enough to send in three of their new Z590 boards for me to unbox and check out. We got the tough Z590 Plus Wi-Fi. Great for gamers on a budget that still want the same cool features like the big boy boards. Moving on up the chain, we got the ROG Strix Z590e Gaming. For those who want to dip their toes into overclocking with some extra shiny bells and whistles, and finally, the ROG Maximus 13 Hero, the board you buy if you want to escape the friend zone. So what's so special about Z590 and should you guys even care? Well, let me break it down for you. For starters, Intel's 11th generation Rocket Lake processors will have PCI 4.0 support, finally, meaning you will now be able to utilize faster speeds of devices such as PCI 4 SSDs. Although Intel 10th Gen CPUs did not support PCI 4.0, Intel equipped the Z490 chipset to support PCI 4.0 on future 11th Gen processors. Also, I should make note that Z590 is also backwards compatible with 10th Gen Intel processors. Z590 also comes equipped with a suite of new connectivity options. We got USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 ports, allowing for maximum transfer rate of 20 gigabits per second. We also get Thunderbolt 4 support, similar to Thunderbolt 3, except we get support for 8K displays and double the speeds. Imagine certain content in 8K resolution. <laughs> yeah, boy. For the enthusiasts out there, you'd be pleased to find that the new boards will support up to DDR4 5,333 MHz through overclocking. And finally, which is my personal favorite new feature, chipset link. The Z590 chipset will now have eight lanes of DMI connectivity with the processor. That's double that of the previous Z490. The increased lanes allow enough bandwidth to the chipset for eight times PCI 3.0 lanes, supporting up to two M.2 SSDs at maximum speed. In short, the Z590 platform is great for those looking to push their hardware to its absolute limit to maximize performance. I'm gonna take a first look at three of these boards right now. Kicking off the unboxing, we got the Tough Gaming Z590 Plus Wi-Fi, Asus's entry-level Z590 board. In the box, you get the usual manual with the driver CD, which no one uses anymore. I don't know why they still include these, to be honest. You also get two SATA cables and the Certificate of Reliability, which is a checklist of tests that Asus goes through for their Tough Gaming boards to make sure their boards live up to the Tough standard. Pretty cool. Of course, you get some stickers and additional mounting screws for your M.2 SSD and the Wi-Fi antennas. Let's start off with the aesthetics. It's a pretty good looking anti-RGB board with an all black theme and minor gray accents. Have you guys noticed that no one is doing those colored motherboards anymore? Back in the day, we used to have like gold, red, and I think even blue. It was all over the place, but it's safe to say that we are officially over that era of cringy color schemes. So most manufacturers out there are now going with a color neutral design, which is what we should have done from the very beginning. The board features a pretty solid 14 plus two power phase design with a noticeably larger VRM heatsink, 1.6 times larger than previous generation to be exact. You also get an extra supplemental four pin EPS connector to provide extra watts to the CPU socket if you plan on overclocking, which if you're buying a Z590 board, why wouldn't you? I like that both the USB 3.0 and USB-C header are located on the right side of the board instead of the bottom like on other boards. It just helps with cleaner cable routing and I love the extra space between the dim slots and the top VRM heatsink, which is large enough to pass through your CPU cooler cables between instead of having to route them over the VRM heatsink, which doesn't look as good in my opinion. This isn't something you really think about when you're buying a motherboard, but you know, doing enough PC builds here on the channel, you start to notice the small things. I love that even the tough gaming lineup offers ample amounts of RGB headers. We can't ever get enough of these, especially in 2021. We got both a five volt and 12 volt header up top. We got another five volt on the bottom with a second 12 volt on the bottom right. Personally, I would have loved to see three five volt headers on this board because I haven't come across many devices out there that still use 12 volt RGB headers. So I feel like having these two 12 volts on here is a waste of space. With the new Z590 chipset, we get more M.2 SSD slots. That's exciting, right? Don't be surprised when you start seeing a minimum of three M.2 SSDs on these boards. Even for the entry-level Z590 boards, that's exactly what we have with the Tough Gaming. One near the top and two side-by-side -side near the bottom. Here's a pretty cool thing I'm actually pretty excited about. So check this out. You no longer need to use any screws to mount your M.2 SSDs. Asus is calling it their new M.2 Q-Latch. 
It's so simple yet effective. You just slide in your M.2 SSD and rotate the latch to lock the drive in place. How stupid easy of a concept is this and why haven't we thought about this years ago? You know, small little things like this might not matter to a lot of you guys watching, but it's the little things like this that get me hyped up. Another thing I'm excited about is their new two-way AI noise cancellation. This feature helps reduce background noise from the microphone and incoming audio while preserving vocals at the same time. This removes distracting keyboard clatter, mouse clicks, and other ambient noises so you can hear and be heard with crystal clarity while gaming or in calls. Try switching the AI noise cancelling function on and off to hear the difference for yourself. Two-way AI noise cancellation filters out unwanted background noise from both your microphone and, and incoming audio. This ensures you can hear and be heard. Complete clarity with seamless communication. And unlike other software out there that impacts performance, ASUS states that their software will have minimal performance impact of about 1.7%. One of the things I found interesting on a tough gaming board is the location of the SATA ports. I like that they tucked in two of them over here near the chipset fan, but the rest of them are on the bottom. It's not a huge deal as most of us plug in usually one or two SATA based storage anyways, but it's something worth noting. One thing I would have liked to see on this board is a dedicated pump header. In case you want to do custom water cooling or if you're installing an AIO pump, it's not a huge deal breaker since you can still go into BIOS and change the settings obviously of that header, but it would have been nice to have. For connectivity, you do get a nice selection of USB 3 ports in the back. You also get a digital optical audio cable, which I know is important for a lot of people, myself including, and of course your USB-C port, which is also Thunderbolt 4 compatible. The Tough Gaming might be an entry-level Z590 board, but it sure as hell packs all the features any gamer would want for a solid gaming and workstation PC. The ROG Strix E Gaming Wi-Fi is ASUS's flagship motherboard lineup, and I just so happen to have their very first one for the Z590 chipset right here. For some reason, ASUS motherboard boxes just feel more satisfying to unbox. In here, you get the Republic of Gamers welcome card, along with some stickers, and their new and revamped user manual. On the bottom, you will find an ROG-themed lanyard for your keychain, four SATA cables, two of which are right angled, and a tiny VRM heatsink fan that gets plugged into the dedicated VRM heatsink fan header right on the top of the board. You also get some installation screws for the heatsink fan and some zip ties to help with cable management. There are two new things also introduced with these new boards. ASUS is now including a magnetic adjustable GPU sag bracket and their new Wi-Fi antenna, which is miles better than their previous version. It's better because it already comes pre-installed and it's magnetic, so you can attach this to the back or the side of your case. Aesthetically, this is one good looking board. We still have that old black stealthy color scheme going on, but we do have subtle accents as well if that tickles your fancy. We got a little bit going on over here on the IO cover and even some parts of the uh, top M.2 shield has RGB. The Strix Z590e Gaming also comes with a 14 plus 2 power stage design with a supplemental 4 pin EPS socket. However, it does have more beefier VRM heatsinks with higher quality chokes and capacitors that will contribute to a heavier and stable overclock. One thing to note here is that there is no gap between the top VRM heatsink and the first dim slot like there was on the previous Tough Gaming board. So if you're gonna install a CPU block on here or a CPU cooler for that matter, you are forced to route the cable over the VRM heat sinks. Not a huge deal, I'm sure it's not a deal breaker for a lot of you guys, but it's something worth mentioning. The board also comes equipped with four M.2 slots. We got two near the top and two side by side near the bottom, all using a new latch system, which removes the need to use a tool or a screw. It's nice to see that both the USB 3 and USB-C headers, along with the SATA ports, are all in a convenient location on the board. However, I would have loved to see an extra USB 3 header considering the price of the board. I'm glad they included a dedicated pump header near the bottom for water cooling, and they even gave us three 5 volt RGB headers this time instead of only two. We've got a 12 and 5 volt up top, and two more 5 volt 3 pins near the bottom. For connectivity, you get more options more USB 3 ports, an extra Type C, which is also Thunderbolt 4 compatible, and you even get dedicated clear CMOS button along with a BIOS flashback, which can really come in handy. I would say the Z590 e Gaming is a great motherboard for those looking to dip their toes into overclocking, someone who wants to do a custom water cool build maybe, or someone who just wants to enjoy the extra features that this board comes with. For those who dare, for the very few hardcore enthusiasts out there, we got the ROG Maximus 13 Hero. 
This is the board to rule them all. Hell, even the unboxing experience is amazing. I just love how it opens up like this. Inside this box of happiness and joy, we have a very thick user manual, another ROG welcome letter, and more stickers than you can ever dream about. Underneath all that, we are greeted with yet another lanyard for your keychain, four SATA ports with two of them being right angled, we got the updated and redesigned Wi-Fi antenna and some extra accessories, like a 5 volt RGB extender, a GPU sag bracket, and the front panel extension adapter with the M.2 installation screws. This is one beefy boy. Aesthetically, this thing looks like a tank. The IO heatsink cover, in addition to the ROG logo on the chipset heatsink, lights up and can be changed via their Aura Sync software. Whoever buys this board means they are not messing around. With a 14 plus 2 power stage design and an extra 8 pin EPS socket to work with, overclocking is definitely a hobby for the user, someone who wants to push the system to its limit. Much like the Strix, this board also has 4 and not 2 slots. However, to gain access to the middle one, you will need to remove the chipset cover as well. The USB ports on this board are in the perfect location. We got a single USB-C right underneath the 24 pin with two additional USB 3 headers angled on the sides of the board, making the cable routing really easy. The dedicated pump header on the bottom of the board is nice for custom water cooling or AIO pump installation, and I'm also a huge fan of the onboard power button. This makes it really convenient powering on a system without a case. Very useful if you're testing your PC beforehand or if you're just using the board with a test bench. We also get the same amount of RGB headers as before. Two 5 volt headers up top, a third 5 volt on the bottom next to a 12 volt. And finally, for connectivity, you get the same exact ports as the Strix with a slightly different layout and a different BIOS flashback and clear CMOS button. All right, so to recap, the Tough Gaming is perfect for entry level or mainstream gaming on the Z590 platform. The Z590 e Gaming is great for overclocking and custom water cool builds with some extra bells and whistles. And the Maximum 13 Hero is for the ballers out there who want all the extra features and also want to push their system to the limit without any compromise. If you don't care about the price and just want the best out there, well, you're looking at it. At least until the Maximus 13 Extreme gets released. So yeah, there's a lot to be excited about with these new Z590 motherboards and Intel's 11th gen processors. Expect some awesome PC builds coming up on the channel very, very soon. If you guys want to check out any of these motherboards, I'll have it linked down below. Again, a huge thanks to ASUS for sending these motherboards out for me to unbox and check out. If you guys enjoyed the video and want to see more motherboard content on the channel, consider tossing a like before you head out. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon in the next one.